Hi, this is Zach Brooks with World Transplant Athletes. Tips and tricks by and for transplant athletes anywhere, anytime, online. If you have a body with a new part and you can move, you are a World Transplant Athlete. As a two-time kidney transplant recipient and frequent participant at local, national, and World Transplant Games, I always wonder, how do other recipients take care of their health and prepare for competitions? For me, there's only one way to find out, and that's to learn from the most inspiring transplant athletes in the world. Today, I have Jillian Best from Canada. Jillian, welcome to the show. Hello, and thank you for having me on. Yeah, you're very welcome. So a couple of weeks ago, you sent me your tips on how to prepare for competitions and so forth. But before we get that, I want to have some uh, warm-up questions for you so people can get to know you a little bit. So the first question I have for you is, which transplant did you have? I had a liver transplant five years ago. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. Second question is, if you had to summarize your entire transplant journey in one word, what would it be? I chose the word transform because after my transplant, I felt like I came out of it a different person. I had a different perspective of life. I have uh, different goals and a new purpose. Mm -hmm. And over the last five years, I feel that I've transformed into a much stronger, grateful and resilient person than I was before. So um, some people listening to what you just said might say, well, where did your organ come from? Do you feel like you took on any personality from the organ and, and the person who donated, donated that organ to you? I honestly don't. I don't think so. Um, I, I just believe that uh, having given the second chance um, mm -hmm. made me really realize how precious life is. Yeah. Um, perhaps, perhaps my organ donor was a very grateful person um, to begin with, um, but I do think it was the overall experience that led me to feel this way. Yeah, absolutely. So third question, warm up question before we get to your tips is, what was your first exercise post transplant? Yeah, so I giggle at this one a little bit because the very first exercise that um, my physio gave me was sit to stands. So sitting in a chair and standing up, um, they wanted to ensure that I could get up and down out of a chair on my own mm -hmm. once I returned home from the hospital. Um, but once I was able to do that, uh, two months after my transplant, I returned to the pool and swimming was my activity of choice. And I haven't stopped swimming since. Yeah, so I mean, I, I, that's, a, that's a fantastic story because so I'll tell the viewers uh, a little bit. I mean, Jillian has been extremely successful at the World Transplant Games, won five gold medals and five world uh, records. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, so her first, her first training session was literally just sitting and then standing, that, that was it. So I just think that's a remarkable starting point. So um, mm -hmm. it's good for anyone who might be listening to this or watching this um, and who's still in the hospital. Like maybe you just had your transplant yesterday, you woke up today, you know, what is your world like? Well, if you're just sitting and standing, that is step one to training and doing some amazing things later. Uh, so in mm -hmm. which activities and sports do you regularly participate? So swimming is number one. Um, it's my favorite. I get the most enjoyment out of it. I do like to run. I like hiking. I like walking my dogs. And um, I've taken on prone paddling this past year, which is, I describe it like a surfboard, but you lay on it and you paddle with your arms. Excellent. So those, are, those are my favorite activities. Okay. So let's get to the heart of the show. A couple of weeks ago, you shared five tips with me on how to exercise or train. And I'm gonna read those tips, one through five, and then we'll go back to the top. And you can talk through those a little bit. So the first tip that Jillian has for everyone is enjoy the sport or activity you're choosing to do. Uh, number two, make it routine or schedule it. Number three, utilize online resources for research. Uh, number four is get a coach or train with a team or a group. And the fi final one that Jillian has for us today is goal setting. So let's go back to the top number one. The first one, you say, enjoy the sport or the activity you're doing. Tell us why you think that's so important in your, your experience. Yeah, I, I think it's really important to find an activity that 
you find enjoyable that is fun. This ensures that you're most likely to continue doing it and prioritizing uh, the time to do your sport and do it more often, especially if you're going to be putting hours into this activity if you want to train for an event at the World Transplant Games. Yeah, or anything for that matter. Gosh, if you're not a swimmer, you should try bowling or like something you really like to do, whatever that is. So, yeah, yeah. Um, no, number two, you have make it a routine or schedule it. Why is that so important for you? It's important because I think having a, a schedule and, and putting that into your calendar um, makes it a priority. And I like to schedule every single workout that I do. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, this has to do with our mental health and our physical health. And it is that important that it needs to be put in a calendar, I believe. Mm -hmm. And it helps to hold you accountable for making the time for it and getting it done. Yeah. You know, I, I read a lot of um, self-help books. I write, I write them too. And I, I read other ones to help me uh, figure out, you know, things to, to write about. And one of the concepts is like scheduling success. That you, if you schedule incremental things in your life, whatever it is, 15 minutes, three times a week on X activity, then you're, you are going to get better. So it's, I think scheduling is extremely important for any activity mm. you want to become good at. Um, the third tip you have is utilizing online resources. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I believe um, immersing yourself in the sport really helps to inspire you and motivate you to keep doing it. So for example, my favorite Olympian is Cody Miller. He's, he's an Olympic breaststroker. I enjoy watching his YouTube channel. Um, he's very positive, um, motivational. Um, and I think learning from others about safety and different ways you can train and becoming better at the sport has helped. It's helped me tremendously in avoiding setbacks, uh, avoiding injuries, and just learning things the hard way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's important. Well, I know from uh, some cognitive science research I've, I've come across that, you know, when you watch an activity, your mirror neurons, which are basically all the neurons in your body that you think you're doing the activity of the person you're watching. That actually is some sort of form of training. If you see Olympic uh, swimmers, in your case, swim and do turns and all these other things, it actually is a form of training because your, your mind is kind of training the body what's coming next. So you're actually getting yourself mm -hmm. ready for the next activity. So the fourth mm -hmm. tip you have here is get a coach or train with teams or, or some sort of group. Why has that been so important for you? I love having a coach. I love training with a team. I think your coach uh, can help you with the training program that helps reduce stress about what should I be doing when I go to the pool or go to the work, the, the gym. Mm -hmm. um, it's laid out for you and you, you know what you're going to do when you get there and your coach can ensure that your form and your technique is good or mm -hmm. give you the advice that you need if, if you need some correction to avoid injuries. Um, and having teammates and or a group uh, to train with makes it a lot more fun and it can hold you accountable for showing up. Mm -hmm. um, it creates friendly competition as well. Yeah. And for me, I find it helps me train harder. So I push myself more when I'm with other people and I, I find that I get a better workout than I would if I was on my own. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm also thinking in terms of COVID, like as the world in different phases comes back to normal and interacts more, how important it is for uh, mental and social health to interact with people. And, and there is this other thing um, called, um, I came across it the other day, re-entry anxiety. So if you're coming back to a social group, you might have some anxiety about it, but overall um, it's really important for your, your mental and social health. And the mm -hmm. final tip you have for us, Julian, is goal setting. So why is that so important? You touched on it earlier a little bit, but tell us why that's so important for you. Yeah, so having, having a goal gives you more purpose behind your training, which gives you more motivation to keep you training for your sport or your event. And I find, um, you know, you may have a big goal, um, but breaking it down into smaller short-term goals mm -hmm. to help you reach the big goal um, can help break it down into more, I like to say, bite-sized pieces that aren't as overwhelming. So it, it helps you to... Um, to not, not look at the big picture every single day, but you're working on these 
smaller goals that will eventually get you to where you want to be, which could be competing at the world transplant games. Yeah. So let's, let's go on that. Let's drill down on that a little bit. So you said, you know, have a goal and that helps your motivation. And then before we started the interview today, you were telling me about your training this morning and how you felt early on. And I was thinking to myself, there's no way you would have continued that training today if you didn't have the big goal which helped your motivation. So can you share some of that, what you shared with me earlier about how long you were in the water and how you felt and what helped you get through it? Yeah. So as I was saying this morning, I, uh, I got in the water and it was cold. It was 48 Fahrenheit. And I knew that I had a 5k swim ahead of me. And I said to my mom who was next to me that I felt wimpy. I didn't feel like getting in and about five minutes in, I'm thinking, oh, I'm cold. My face is numb. Um, but as I said earlier, I try not to believe any thoughts that I'm having in the first, you know, 20 minutes to half an hour of my workout because I am just warming up. And it was about half an hour later where I started feeling great and my stroke felt smooth. My face felt fine from the cold water. And I actually really enjoyed my swim. So mm -hmm. I I find that, um, you know, all I had to focus on that day was the 5k swim. I wasn't thinking about the marathon swim that I'm training for, you know, at, at, uh, at the end of the summer. I mean, it's in the back of my mind, but I'm not thinking that I'm overwhelmed about it in that moment. I'm, I'm really focused on the present moment and getting through that training swim that will eventually lead me to my bigger goal. Yeah. I mean, I just, I can't, after you told me that story, I connected the goal and the motivation. Like there's, seems to me like almost no chance you would have stuck with it today if you didn't have the motivation that came from the bigger goal of this competition uh, later this summer. So thanks for sharing that. And what I wrote this down earlier, it's just so well said that um, don't remember anything the first, you know, 30 minutes or something like that. What, what did you say earlier? Um, oh, don't yeah. believe, don't believe your, don't believe any thoughts you have the first half an hour during your warm up because, um, like I said, I felt kind of, kind of bad at the beginning, but um, if I had believed myself that, oh, this is going to be a bad swim, I feel awful, you know, that, that sets a, a negative mindset. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I really try to remember that at the beginning of my workouts, like, okay, you know, you're feeling a little rough right now, but give it some time and, and you'll start feeling better. And, and I always do. And mm -hmm. so I, I kind of taught myself not to believe myself, not to believe those thoughts that come, come, come up in the first um, part of my workout, because, you know, it's, it's going to get better and, it'll, and you'll pass it. And, um, and you want to have good uh, thoughts and, and, you know, that mental chatter going on in your head, you want to ensure that it's, it's not bringing you down. So. Absolutely. Thank you yeah. uh, so much, Jillian. That's fantastic. So uh, for everyone else out there, thank you um, for watching. Thanks again to Jillian Best from Canada. Um, for audience members, you can log into facebook.com forward slash world transplant athletes on a weekly basis, approximately. I'll post some other um, video podcasts from other athletes. Uh, world transplant athletes, tips and tricks by and for transplant athletes anywhere, anytime online. If you have a body, with a new part and you can move, you are a world transplant athlete. Jillian, thanks again for being on the show. It was my pleasure to be here. Thank you so much.